Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth just for a quick second. When I tell y'all I am tired and I ain't even did nothing, um, so yesterday, yesterday, I went and got the first dose of the monkeypox vaccine. I have to go take the second dose, I think, in 30 days, something like that. While I was there, I was asking the woman, um, what, when would I be able to get a booster shot? And she was like, oh, you can do both of them today. I was like, oh, I can? I was like, okay, cool. So I got both of them. One time I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the shots. I don't know. This was, I don't know. I don't know why I'm tired, but I'm just tired, girl. And I felt like I was getting sick. Um, so for me, I ended up getting mucus in my throat. <laughs> and I was like, I know you're not about to get sick. So I ran to the store. I took some Benadryl last night. And I ran to the store. Let me turn this TV off. I ran to the store. Excuse me, got like some Theraflu and stuff. And then, you know, this change of weather in Houston, girl. Excuse me. But this change of weather in Houston, it's only 7.32. When I tell y'all, as soon as I get done with this video, I'm getting in the shower, fixing me some Theraflu, and going to bed. Baby, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow, because I'm over it today. Do you hear me? So, yeah, I don't know why I'm so tired. I don't know if it's the shots. I don't know. I just, I'm just very, very tired. Um, but I also know that I'm like one of those grown men. You know how they, <laughs> I, know, I, I, know how, I know how I am. I'm one of those grown men where, like, girl, I do act like a baby. <laughs> girl, and, like, I just act like I can't do nothing. <laughs> girl got one sniffle and swore up and down, honey. Girl, I'm in ICU. <laughs> girl, I you, he's just dramatic. <laughs> girl, you done cough one time and you swore up and down, girl. You in ICU fighting for your life. <laughs> girl, just dramatic. Anyway, um, that's how I feel, though, y'all. Oh, that's how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. Oh, girl, it's a mess. So, who are we talking about first? Let's see. So long story short, girl, this is going to be a quick hot topics today. So G Herbo, is that, that his name? G Herbo admits that he cheated on Ari with Tiana because he was young and dumb. I said, well, girl, I, you know, I went, the way he said it, I was thinking he was like in his 30s now, girl. I think I Googled he was only 27. Girl, why? Girl, that was just a few years ago, sir. Okay, anyways, he was young and dumb. Me and her were having our differences, but that was no excuse to cheat on her. Can I say something? Can I say she, he was basically on Carisha, please. He was on Carisha, please. You know, Carisha got on my nerve, but Carisha has one of the cutest laughs to me. It's very, like, feminine. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. It's like a very feminine, like, sexy, cute laugh. When I, I heard her laugh, and I was like, she has a very attractive laugh. I know that sounds crazy. Um... But anyways, um, for the girls, I don't keep up with G Herbo, if that's his name, Tatiana, Tayana, whatever her name is, and I don't keep up, with, uh, keep up with Ari like that. We've talked about them here and there, but I don't keep up with them like that, okay? So I don't know the ins and outs of their relationship. But I remember talking about them, and I was like, girl, it's just something about this whole, that it, it's moving my spirit I'm just going to go ahead and say it. That Tiana girl, Williams, T Tiana, ain't that fabulous step stepdaughter? I think daughter, I think he's been in her life for a very long time. Um, she just doesn't give me, I think she tries to play this innocent role, but I'm, I, I don't, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. And I know that there are plenty of times and situations where we have heard of the man not telling the woman 
or lying to the woman about a situation that he has at home, right? And the other person doesn't know. For some reason, I feel like that girl knew. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. And I feel like she banks on the fact that Ari is looked at. I'm just going to go ahead and say this, okay? Ari is looked at as a ghetto hood bitch. And Tiana, whatever, is kind of looked at as the, oh, the innocent, even though, girl, she popping out babies left and right, and she, what, 21, 22? Girl, the innocent just, oh, I don't know any better. Like, I just, I'm just, I grew up in the suburbs, and I'm just a valley girl. I feel like that's what she tries to give off. And because Ari gives hood ghetto bitch, people tend to automatically side our Ari. When I was saying that the math wasn't math, because... I think I read something about like when they got together, I think Ari's son that she has with this guy was like five months old. I was like, baby, please. Ain't no way. That girl was already like, girl, you was creeping around with this nigga knowing he was still dealing with this woman. Now he says that basically now he's admitting that he cheated on Ari. Now, again, that does not mean that Tiana knew or whatever her name is, knew that he was in a relationship with Ari, but I think she did. I think that girl has a lot of people fooled. I do. I do. I think she knew. And I think that sometimes, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think sometimes women and men, whether you gay or straight, you know a situation ain't right, but you choose to look the other way because you want what you want. And I feel like even if Tiana, I don't know how to say it. I don't call the girls every, every name in the book. TT, girl, even if she didn't know all the way, I'm sure she had to know something was, wasn't right. I was young and dumb. Nigga, you only 27 from, from what I saw. <laughs> yeah. Let's listen to let's listen to Coach Stormy. It's my thing. Um, let's listen to Coach Stormy, y'all. Desires a housekeeper. Oh, today we. Let me start over. Every woman desires a housekeeper. Today we are interviewing a potential new housekeeper. One thing that I don't have time for is domestic stuff. I am busy changing the world, changing my life, changing my mind. So I don't have time to do things like wash clothes, wash the dishes, clean up the kitchen, clean up the bathroom, clean up the living room. I don't have time for that. And so one of the things I want you ladies to think about in this new season is new rules. New rules meaning in this new season, I don't do things that is not income producing activity. Income is necessary. It is not okay to be broke. It is not okay to rob Peter to pay Paul. It's not okay to live from paycheck to paycheck. In this next season, I want you to think that you're going to focus your time on doing things that bear fruit. And as you bear fruit, you use that fruit to feed others. What does that mean? Hire people. Feed people with your fruit. And that's what I want you to think. New rules. I will feed people mentally, spiritually, financially, and emotionally with my fruit. New rules. Again, I will feed people mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially with my fruit. Everything that I do in this season will bear fruit. New rules. Okay. A lot of the stuff that Coach Stormy said I actually agree with. It's just a couple of things I was like, Coach Stormy. This is the only thing I, well, I don't know nothing about no Coach Stormy. She was the one with the, she, I did the low vibrational plates. I would never <laughs> eat that. I'm a queen. <laughs> They sitting there eating swine, talking about, girl, I would never eat that. I would never let somebody put all that food on my plate. Whatever she was saying, girl, I can't remember, child. <sighs> the first thing I want to say is this. I'm not mad at that lady. She's making a living. I know some people say that she's a scammer. I don't think she's a scammer. I think that she has just tapped into a market and she's just making a whole bunch of money. If the people give their money 
So whatever they feel like they're going to gain from it, then girl, that's, it is what it is. Um, I'm not mad at this lady. She lives, she lives a very rich black woman lifestyle. I'm not mad at it. But I, I was sitting here thinking like, girl, I know it had to be tiring to be her friend. Excuse me, or to be around her. I wonder if she ever just has a moment where, girl, we can just chill and just relax. Like, girl, I feel like being around Coach Stormy, she will always, 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 always just talk about money. Like, money, 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 money. Like, ways I can make money. Ways this is not right. This is it. Like, I don't I don't know if there ever comes a time with Coach Stormy where, girl, the girls can just chill and relax. And everything ain't got to be a life lesson. And everything ain't got to be, you know, about income producing activity. You know, listen, the first thing is this. I'm not mad at Coach Stormy for saying what she said. Girl, it's 20. We're going into 2023. <laughs> the only ones who are sitting here <laughs> believing that crazy shit about trying to be girl. Because <laughs> girl, most women I know work. Okay. Most men probably work. <laughs> girl, I going to say all of them, but. Girl, people work nowadays. So all I'm saying is, girl, it makes sense for Coach Stormy to be like, girl, we ain't, we ain't got time to be sitting here trying to cook and clean and domestic stuff, girl. You pay somebody to do that. Now, girl, you ain't got to be rich to have no... Girl, I know a couple of people who have somebody come and clean their house up. Girl, you ain't got to be rich to do that, child. Um, the only part that I really was like side-eyeing Coach Stormy is when she started talking about, girl, it's not okay to live paycheck to paycheck. <sighs> I think there are some sorry people out here. I do. I think there are people out here who just come up with excuse after excuse after excuse um, and not try and better their life. I think there are sorry people out here. I think there are lazy people. I think there are people that are not motivated. Um, I do think that, but I don't think that the majority of people think it's okay to live check to check. I think that's just their financial situation. And I think that's a financial situation for a lot of people. When you really think about it. And I remember my aunt on my dad's side saying this years ago, like around 2001, that's how long ago, and it still stuck with me. Basically, uh, we were here, we were going somewhere, I can't remember, and I was in the car, it was her and a cousin of mine on my dad's side. And I remember my cousin said something, and my aunt was like, no, nah, we don't do that, we don't talk that way, you know, people are one check away from being homeless. And I was like, girl, what? One check away from being homeless? Like, who doing that bad? That's what that's my young mentality, right? Until I realized one day, I was like, girl, this was some years ago. I realized, like, girl, you ain't got nothing saved up. If you don't get your check, like, like if you were to, if you didn't get paid at your job every two weeks, you would be up a, you would be up a fucking shit creek. <laughs> you would be up a creek with no paddle. And it finally dawned on me what my aunt was saying about people living check to check, right? So people live check to check. I don't think that everyone, I don't think that everyone that's in, that, in, in a situation like that, they're there just because they think that it's okay. <laughs> They're there because, girl, either, girl, they grew up in a situation where, girl, they were not blessed to be born into money or to be born into a family that motivated them or, you know, there are so many reasons why people live te check to check and it's just not because people think that it's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Coach Stormy is who she is. Like I say, you know, uh, some of the stuff, like even with the whole plate stuff. I got what Coach Stormy was saying. It was just <laughs> the way she said it. I was like, okay, I get where she's going. <laughs> I get where I got. I got what Coach Stormy was going with that with that with that with that plate stuff. I did. Even I get what she's going with this. It's just like, girl, she always misses the mark, which kind of is weird to me because you would think someone who I guess is supposed to be this 
speaker, this, I can, in a way, in, in this inspirational speaker, right? Um, to inspire you and to motivate you that she will be better with her choice of words. But it's always like, girl, you always kind of like uh, miss the mark. Like, girl, I feel like she missed the mark right here. Um, I think she really could have used this moment to really, but girl, it's all about money to Coach Stormer from what I've seen. But I'm not mad at no bitch for getting a housekeeper. And the truth of the matter is you are employing other folks. So get you a housekeeper, girl. Go make your money. Go make your money. Get you a housekeeper. Girl, pay whoever go to clean your house. Pay whoever, girl, you need to cook your food. Girl, ain't nobody got time to be sitting in no kitchen. Girl, we, we, we in 2023. Ain't nobody got time to be sitting in no kitchen cooking no meals for no nickel. Girl, as long as you got something to eat when your black ass come home, that's all you need to be concerned about. Because, bitch, I'm working too. <laughs> you got me a plate of, you got me a hot meal on the, on the stove when I come home anyways child that's all I had to say about Coach Stormy who else girl I'm woke out can y'all tell oh girl Todd Chrisley goes off on granddaughter's mom, Angela, after she said she plans um, to regain custody of Chloe once the couple is behind bars. Girl, let me play this clip, y'all. I'm sure Todd was probably reading that later to shreds. Hey, that, you know, you're going to now step forward and say, I'm coming. Oh, shit. Hold up, y'all. You know, I would say that, you know, you're going to now step forward and say, I'm coming for my daughter. My daughter needs to come home, et cetera, et cetera. Know what you need to do, because I know that you listen to this, Angela. What you need to do is understand that I have retained every text message, and so has Julie, with any communication that we've ever had with you. We have not released those, but if we need to, we will. So that's just, that's just drawing our line in the sand. You have had no relationship with Chloe. She does not have any relationship with you. You've never reached out to talk to her. You've never sent her a Christmas gift or a birthday gift. You've never done anything for her. So focus on those two children that you have with two other men and don't worry about the one that you gave away. Julie and I have her and we've had her since she was six months old. So for Angela to say that, you know, she has, uh, that we got her, Chloe, when she was five, you know, I would say that, you know, you're going to now step forward and say, I'm coming for my daughter. My daughter needs to come home, et cetera, et cetera. Know what you need to do? Because I know that she was five years old. It's just a lie. You know, she went to Mount Pisgah Christian School when she was an infant. We had her in the little, what is it, little pre-K program there we, that we paid $1,500 a month for. So that's well before she was five years old. You know, the doctor's appointments that show when we got her with almost, what was it, second degree burns on her bottom, where, she, where Angela had allowed her to lay in a diaper that was dirty and soiled when she was five years. I thought they had that baby before five years because, girl, they had that baby because Chrissy's nose best been on TV for how long? Chrissy's nose best been on TV for a good minute now. And I, and I remember seeing that baby on the TV when she was like a baby baby. I could be mistaken. But girl, you just never know, child. Because Ty, let me say something. Ty, well, girl, we, we know y'all are liars. You and Julie over there lying. I mean, girl, the proof is in the pudding. But girl, I do believe, I've said this, I'll say it again. I do believe that, girl, you know, sometimes I, I hate, I, 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 girl, I hate to, I hate to be this person to say it. Um, but if Chloe is, I feel like Chloe would probably be better where she's at. Girl, how dare you? I hate to sound like this, but how dare you try to come into this girl's life and shake up her world? This girl probably don't even know you. And I believe it. She probably don't even know you. While yes, you know, Todd and Chris, Todd and um, Julie about to go away <laughs> and do their time. Girl, um, I don't think that you should cause any more chaos than what they've already caused in this little girl's life by trying to come and get her and uproot her and take her to an environment that she knows nothing about. Girl, while yes, you are her mother, girl, you are not her family. 
And I think that if Savannah and the other kids are going to step up and make sure that Chloe is fine, I think that, that, that that's what should be done. Now, I think that if she wants to try to build some type of relationship with her, I think that would be okay if, that, if that's what Chloe especially wants to do. Um, but I don't think that she should try to just snatch that girl out of uh, from her family. Sorry. Anyways, child. All right, y'all. I'm gone. I'm about to go take me a shower. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye.